Why not make a photography channel? Why not make it a film photography channel? And I um, didn't see any reason why I should not. I'm just about to go uh, walking around in a small town in Kentucky called Wilmore, and I'm going to take my film camera with me. It's a Nikon FG, and I'm going to be shooting Kodak Ultramax 400, but I'm going to put the pictures up on screen as soon as I take them, and hopefully this will be uh, worth watching. Oh, I will show you my current stock of film. It's not all the film I've ever bought. I've, I've, uh, a lot of my f film is in, is in negative protectors right now, but, uh, what I have currently not shot is mostly, uh, Kodak 400, and, uh, I actually have not purchased this film before, so, uh, I'm seeing what it's like. I'm assuming it's it's kind of like their their uh, 200 version called Gold. Um, so I'm hoping it'll turn out like that or better because I have some experience with that film. And I bought 10 rolls of that. One is in my camera, so I have nine left. And over here, this is the special stuff. This is the uh, the really really exclusive film uh, that they keep like discontinuing and then and then uh, not discontinuing and it's called the Rolly C200 as you can see from the from the container and it's a it's a C41 negative. Uh, what's special about it is it's kind of uh, like a recreation of an old Agfa film, I think. It doesn't have an orange mask, if you know what that is. My, my phone decided to die in the middle of that, so I'll go back to where I was in the, uh, to introducing my film. So we were, uh, where were we? We were at the Rolly CN200. So with the, uh, the orange mask, if you know anything about color negative film, you'll know that uh, negative film by itself tends to have uh, be too sensitive to red light, something like that. Because if you don't put a mask on, it'll just uh, have a red cast and just kind of be pick up that s side of the spectrum a little too much. So uh, the risk with this film, without the orange mask, aka red mask, because orange has red. But if the the risk with this is that all your pictures will have a kind of a red tint, which they kind of do. If you just look up examples of this film on on Google, uh, so uh, one would uh, that I'm going to try to avoid that is a not not taking pictures of red stuff, and b don't take pictures of stuff in red light, and uh, sunlight is red light, so. Uh, yeah, just take pictures indoors with like fluorescent LED tungsten light. Uh, I think tungsten might have some red in it though. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to try to see what this film does. If it's too red, I might not get it again. Or may maybe I'll like it. Uh, so there's two rolls in here. It's another kind of interesting quirk about this is that I mean, like, what other film comes in a two-roll pack? It's kind of an uh, interesting shape of this container. And uh, I'm really excited to see w uh, what comes out of that uh, rolly. And then, uh, of course, I have the, the stock tried-and-true Kodak 400 that's, like, uh, cheap and but it but it's good uh, so then uh, that's this stuff right here is what I'm gonna be doing for this video this uh this Kodak and then camera died again uh, but I'm back 
just want, I want to finish this up by saying uh, once I do my review of or kind of video of me taking pictures with this film with the Ultramax I will most likely do a video on this film because it's it's too good to not pay attention to it's it's rolly I mean this film is probably not going to be around in a short time and it's pretty unique without the orange mask and it uh, being rolly of course so there'll be a video coming up with this with these two roles definitely uh, stay tuned well, uh, here I am I made it I drove my bike out to the middle of Wilmore Kentucky there's the old historic downtown which is quite nice and we have the, the railroad the old railroad station trains still come by here and of course over here we have the museum and that red caboose uh, so I'm here to take pictures and it's the, uh, the Nikon FG as I said I have the, the Kodak 400 loaded into it I have the, the 50mm f2 automatic indexing lens and here I go uh, I've taken many many shots of this this same area before so I'll have to think of something new to do uh, for this video but uh, because you, most of you guys have probably not seen this part of the country before or maybe you haven't even seen this country before who knows so um, I always wondered why those camouflage vehicles are in the back of the police station maybe in case there's a doomsday situation they can uh, kind of like bring out the big guns and then they, I don't know but uh thinking of a shot that I'll get this uh, railroad and the that abandoned building back there that may be hard for you to see in this video but it's it's back there and uh, yeah so that'll this is kind of the shot we can see right here I'm going to uh, explain to you how I get my exposure. I don't use a light meter. I don't use the zone system. I just use this kind of uh, trick called Sunny 16, which is uh, 100 ISO, 16 F, F16, and 1 100th of a second. <clears throat> then I uh, kind of adjust based on how many stops I I estimate that the scene is darker than full direct bright sunlight. So this light, it's probably like four, four full stops under what it would be if it was just I'm back. It may not seem like much time has elapsed to you, but my phone died again and well, it ran out of memory really. And uh, I had to get, drive my bike all the way back to home, uh, back up the files, delete them from my phone, then walk back here. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take a picture going that way. And now, uh, when I left you, or when the camera left me, I was talking about uh, how I get my pictures to not be like black or white, how I get them to be uh, exposed properly. And I do that using Sunny 16. So I imagine this, uh, this like Windows XP background picture, green field and blue sky, just perfectly lit, brilliant sunlight. Then I see, say to myself, you know, how many stops of light away am I from being in that ideal, that ideal bright bliss?
picture and then I uh, I kind of adjust my camera to that so I'm using this uh, this 400 ISO film so I don't have to worry about two stops already and uh, I, so I'm gonna take care of the other uh, two stops with my aperture and shutter speed so I'll take you down here to my camera so I can, you can see me uh, doing that process. Here we are. You can see the aperture ring itself with all its numbers. And uh, so with Sunny 16, your default that you go to is 16, obviously. So if you wanted to add a stop of light, to your exposure, you would just start at 16 and then go down. And I'll just add one stop, so I'll go here to 11. And but I still need one more stop of light, and I'll gain that by uh, by with my shutter speed. So on Sunny 16, you obviously start with 100 of a second. So I'll just go down to a 60th, and that's that's not exactly 150th of a second, but uh, it's close enough. So now uh, my camera should be set up so that this scene will be properly exposed. I'm not necessarily going to, going to take you through that uh, that long, boring process for every shot. I'm just going to go around and, and photograph. So, but that was just to show you my method that I that I use. And uh, so here it goes. I'll just kind of show you my point of view, and then I'll put up the pictures as I take them. Yeah, this uh, sign, 98, it's always said 98, but uh, I'm always curious, what does that mean, 98, uh, 98 miles, 98 kilometers, probably miles, because this is the great, greatest country on Earth, which uses the greatest measurement system on Earth. So, I'm going to take a picture of this. If you look at that, another person has uh, sold their life to tobacco. So, so sad. We mourn the loss of their, their life, or what's left of it. You know, there's... Well, I mean, t just take a look for yourself. There's nothing much around here that's interesting. basically gravel to put it simply and I'm gonna I'm gonna take us downtown and there's gonna be some nice buildings and that'll make us make it a lot easier to to do a video. Here we are. This is the Manhattan of Wilmore, the business district where all the supposed businesses are, but now they're all they're all commercial prayer groups, which is kind of accurate, but it still looks the same. If only the the buildings were what they used to be. 